So welcome to today's episode, the Ty Lopez Show. We're looking for the good life. How do you live the good life? Health, wealth, love, happiness. Dan, somebody I've known for a decade, he's a suit, what I call a super entrepreneur, meaning like he's got his hands in everything. He just bought himself a big ranch. Am I allowed to say that? He yeah, I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't posted it yet, but yeah. He's on that, he's <laughs> this is the exclusive premiere. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting his chickens. Hey, the way the world's going now, you better be able to grow your own food, man. Oh, yeah, I got lots of chickens. I don't want you having to show up on my farm to get your eggs. Mine are on the East Coast. So, so Dan's got a $100 million mastermind, which is all these top entrepreneurs from around the world get together. He brings in super celebrities to come speak, billionaires. Uh... And, but Dan's got all these businesses. He's also an investor himself. He does all these angel investments. He's probably got invested in, I don't know how many companies in your career. 37. Hundreds, probably. What's the number? 37. Is that ones you're directly invested in now? Yeah, that's the ones that I put in physical cash. That's separate from ones I own equity in um, or advisory board. That's ones that I put in physical, at least six figures into. Awesome. Okay. So here's what we're going to talk about. Here's our agenda. Because... Dan is also a master of social media. So he's helped, like, he's done stuff with the Kardashians, everybody, influencer marketing, everything people are talking about. So I want to talk about the evolution of social media over the last five years, because I feel like everything's changed. That's number one. I want to talk about if you were to build a brand from scratch, what would be like the simple one, two, three social media formula? Like, would you just try to do TikTok? Would you still do Insta and YouTube? Um, we're going to talk about how somebody who's lazy or confused on how to s post content can just easily start creating content. Okay. Um, we're going to talk about spending $60 million a year on influencers and what you've learned by doing that this year, you've already paid 3,500 influencers to post for brands. So you got, he's got all kinds of unique, um, experience, how you invest your money. Anyway, this, we have it other stuff but one other thing i'm just going to read it takes a whole page to to put the accolades of dan fleischman he was the youngest founder of a publicly traded company he licensed apparel brand for 9.5 million dollars at the age of 19. he scaled an energy drink his energy drink business to 55,000 retail stores he's currently an angel investor in 36 companies he launched a sports card shop during the pandemic cards and coffee he has a cool charity where they give out backpacks to homeless people. It's called Model Citizen Fund. And he organized 49 free events. I've gone to a few of them. I've spoken at some called Elevator Nights. So let's start with this first agenda point. What has changed and but also what hasn't changed? Let's just take the last five years, yep. 2017 to today. So the main thing that's changed is the algorithm. Before, when we had a chronological feed, you would see... The people that you followed, you'd see them in real time or effectively in real time in order. So if Ty was at a restaurant and he would post about being at the restaurant and I was in the restaurant too, or I was going to the restaurant, I could interact with him and be like, hey, I'm going to be there too. That's social media. Now it's just media. The social part has been removed the last five years where Ty could post from the restaurant. I might not see it for two days, three days, four days or ever because Instagram and other platforms think that they want to show it to me at a different certain time of the day or if at all, because I haven't engaged in Ty's post the last two times, maybe they don't want to show it to me, et cetera. And so social media became media the last five years has been the biggest change. And also the competition of amount of influencers changed drastically. 2017, there was hundreds of influencers that were big, thousands that were out there. Now there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of big influencers, tens of thousands of like quite big, like 500K plus, thousands and thousands that have millions of followers. And then you have a very big number of people that have like 5 million to a hundred million, which never existed before. Now you have that at scale and you have, I can't even, I don't even know the number of micro influencers or people that think they're an influencer, which is in the tens of <laughs> tens of millions. And I like so that. I think I'm an influencer. Yes. That's a new category. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to call it the thinks. So by the way, on, on that, did you see Joe Rogan did an interview with Mark Zuckerberg? in the last couple of days and he said well you can hear mark zuckerberg actually admitting that on certain things for example the high the 
Hunter Biden? Biden's son, Hunter, yep. with this laptop stuff that the FBI reached out to Facebook, asked them to kind of suppress the algorithm or use the algorithm to suppress. What do you think? Like, for sure that's going on. I mean, Twitter's probably even worse than Facebook right. on that. Like how does a how do how do you deal with that? Like you have a person here watching can build a brand, e-com brand, get a hundred thousand followers, post, and like thirty of their followers see it. Right. So the main way to combat it is if you can't beat them, join them. Meaning there's a lot of key words that you can't say or use. Otherwise, they will depress or suppress your content. So for example, let's say Ty had a product and it was you know clock. And he wanted me to help him with social media campaign selling clocks. But I, in my caption, or in the influencer's caption, he wants me to say, buy it now, link in bio, discount 20%. Every one of those little phrases depresses the content. Just saying buy it now depresses the content. Saying link in bio depresses the content. Because Instagram and other platforms want to make all the money. They know a lot of the key words that like a Fashion Nova type brand utilize. So if you say discount, link in bio, 50% off, things like that, it suppresses the content. So it's very difficult with an influencer with 100,000 followers when they're excited to say, hey, guess what? I just launched my new clocks company. Boom, swipe up, go here, click my link in bio, use my discount code 50%, use this code FGH4. Any of those things will suppress the content. If you use multiple of them, then good luck. Like Ty said, 30 people are going to see it. And so that part. And then if you say like Donald Trump in it, then it'll really yeah. get suppressed. Yeah, you say any of the keywords of you say anything political, COVID, Trump, any of the keywords that are out there. Uh, immediately, you can get uh, shadow banned, which people say is not true. It's very, very true because I deal with a lot of influencers oh, yeah. that have been shadow banned. Uh, yeah, let's talk about this shadow ban. Do you see where do you see it the most? You see, I've seen it on YouTube happen. Yeah. Um, so you, you think it's happening on almost every platform where they shadow ban people? Absolutely. So YouTube is notorious for it. They just took down one of the biggest influencers ever uh, a few weeks ago. And there's a lot of people very upset about it. Um, it's called Steve Will Do It. Steve Will okay. Do It gets a bazillion views. They literally removed his whole profile. The reason people are upset about it is huh. he goes out and donates a car, six figures, get you know, helping someone buy a house. Like he's out there actively doing all the things that Ty used to do quite actively when you were in the social media when you were focused on the social media game back then, like giving away cars and giving away prizes to make people feel good and help people's lives. That's what Steve Will Do It did. They literally removed his whole account. Like yeah. there's a like outrage about it. Uh, what's the reason? Like why do they care? What was he doing? Well anytime someone does content that stands out or that they don't agree with or is woke or some situations happening or right. then they just decide that they're going to remove it and you can't fight but them what over was his was he is he a right wing guy is he like i don't know what he did he does a lot of outrageous stuff in his process of raising capital he does a lot of outrageous things like he'll i'm going to stand on the roof for three days until you guys all donate oh. you know gotcha gotcha so <laughs> so is there where they're going to say somebody was maybe going to die I, trying to do it i, trying, I, I never even heard why they took so, it down what do you uh, think about Andrew Tate getting kicked off everywhere? So it's interesting. Um, his was a creative genius marketing ploy. A lot of things he was saying is so uh, polarizing that it works, right? Yeah. In anything, you've talked about lots of times, in anything, 50% is going to hate you, 50% will love you, and that's the most famous people, Donald Trump, the Kardashians, etc. They become the most famous because of the, Conor McGregor. They become the most famous people not necessarily for their skill, like McGregor's lost his last three fights, right? But he's still the biggest ticket selling fighter there is. Uh, right. But their polarizing things that they say uh, is what makes them huge. Andrew Tate did that at scale really fast, like really fast. Um, so taking him down is an interesting decision for multiple platforms to do uh, because he wasn't saying anything technically harmful. He was just saying things that were mentally harmful or mentally interesting for people to hear uh, what he was saying. Right. And most of it being against women. And so what can happen is at major platforms, if the men or women decide, you know what, this guy keeps doing these polarizing things and saying bad things about women or bad things for men to think about or how to act towards women, you know, they can make a decision yeah. that they want to suppress this content or what they did was just completely remove him from the platform. What's interesting for him is he actually got famous not by posting his own content, by incentivizing yes. people within his academy to go post it for him, about him. 
Exactly. I mean, it was genius. That was a very smart move smart. he did. He yeah. just got everybody else to post for him. Yep. So do you think they're going to start suppressing other people's post that has his face in the video for sure will they use ai will they use man they've got big offices of facebook in india manually because you got to manually review suicides and crazy stuff that gets posted do you think there's an actual mandate from the top down at big platforms saying if anybody posts this dude thing behind the scenes start suppressing it start shadow banning it yes absolutely i think anybody using the the keyword or the tag andrew tate is going to get suppressed not deleted, but suppressed. But do you think they can actually recognize his face? And oh, do absolutely. Like I know they can. Here's interesting. Let's say that you and I make this video right now, right? Of us doing an interview. But the video starts out with me in the first five seconds on your post. And you do a main feed post. Yes. It will not get any good engagement. Because right. most of your audience won't know me. So if there's millions of followers and only a few hundred thousand know me. Instagram will think, wait, that's not Ty. And they literally won't show yeah. it to people because it's me in your video and vice versa. And so what happens is, even by the way, you're much more famous. So if I post you and you're the first five seconds, I still won't get that good engagement because even people recognize you, it's still not Dan. Right. And so that, yeah. that will happen at scale. Someone goes out there and posts Andrew Tate as the video and they're not in it, it will not get good, not just good engagement, it won't get shown. What, what are the odds, what do you give it, that he gets reinstated on all the major platforms? Oh, I, I don't like his side. I would bet against him. He's, give him twenty percent chance. Uh, less, I would. Yeah, like I, I, think there's a lot of women that work at that at Facebook and Instagram that do not want him back, and I can imagine that corporate meeting of them trying to explain why he should come back. I don't, I don't see it. What's the stuff like? I, I, he, we've DM'd before over the last year or two before he was even, you know, blown up everywhere. So, but I, I don't watch that much stuff. So, like, what's the, what is the controversial stuff he was saying? Is it it's, like, it's mostly about it's mostly about how to how he treats women, um, how to date with women, how to make women subservient to you. If you're the alpha male, everything about being an alpha male and how women should treat. Oh right. It's all those things, but he does it at, at like very over the top, ridiculous. Um, effectively talking about what he can do all over and how he can get laid anywhere with any woman and any time. Like he just completely over the top across everything and talking about that for other guys and trying to teach that to guys about how they should be this type of alpha male uh, and how they should be treating their women and how women should even think about men in general. And so, especially during these yeah, times. It's, it's like the old pickup, mar I mean, all the old yeah. pickup artists back from like 2000. Pickup yeah. artists were big from, let's say, 2005 to 15. Now they're almost all gone right. or switched their business model because the same thing. San Francisco, I can see that not playing well. Um, San Francisco's not a place to trifle with right now. Well, by the way, what do you think of True Social? I was reading some articles on True so Social today. Yep. You think they have a chance of making it? So hundreds and hundreds of social media platforms have come and gone and we've never heard about them. Why? Right. Because in order to get big, they need other social media platforms for people and influencers to post, hey, go follow me on True Social. Good luck yes. posting on Instagram or Facebook or TikTok or Twitter the words True Social. Good gotcha. luck. <laughs> so it's just not, it's yes. very, very difficult to promote what you're going to build. And even if you do, it's not native to us. We are addicted to going on Facebook multiple times a day. We are addicted right. to go on Instagram multiple times a day. Some of the average numbers of how many people log into Instagram per day is mind boggling. Not for long periods, but 18 times a day they go on there. Well, holy smokes, like that's not going to happen on yeah. true social or any new social platform. And so we've noticed, if you think about the last decade, how many new platforms really exist? Besides TikTok, what's new? Well, TikTok's the one. Snap came out and, you know, really grew in 15, 16, 17. I haven't yeah, paid one TikTok. influencer on Snap in three years. You know, Not one. Cl Clubhouse tried. They did well for a second. Yep. You know. And they, the thing Clubhouse for these platforms, Clubhouse had a real shot. At, Clubhouse had a real shot at glory. The problem for them was they, they didn't take the simple advice that multiple of us gave them was pay influencers to host their own daily shows. So Ty Lopez, yes. every Saturday at 12 p.m., give the guy six figures a, a month or whatever to have a deal to be on their yes. Sundays at 12 or Saturdays at 12 and Kevin Hart at two o'clock and this person at this time, like, like a radio. By the way, that's going to happen right here on Speakeasy and I want you to, to help. You and got it. We got a budget for it. We're putting together a budget. I'm talking to big, some big influencers on my own, but 
let's talk on that because we finally built out it's been 12 months we built out the features it's got almost every feature in the next one month they'll be rolling out but it's already there and it's monetizable people can subscribe to paid shows there's no other platform that has what we built in the last year in in here in speakeasy plus we're going to try to we wanted to be a free speech app as long as it's not, we got to stay on the app platforms. We don't want to get kicked off, right. you know, the Apple and Android store, but so we'll have to kick off some people that are just too outrageous, but we're going to definitely not kick off. I mean, you could, I'd let Donald Trump be on here because Donald Trump's not going to get you kicked off the app store. Right. He got, that was a decision that Twitter made. And I, and I do think it's insane to kick off a president. Even right. if you don't agree with a president, look, if somebody's insane, like somebody you're dating, you want to know. You want to give them a voice. You don't want them sneaky and quiet. If right. I'm, if you're dating a woman or a man, you want on day one that they go batshit crazy right in front of you, so you can be like, "Thank God I didn't, you know, marry this person." I was watching. You ever seen that movie? Along came Polly with Ben Stiller. Yeah, dude, it's the. I forgot to, but you got to go watch that movie. It's from like whatever, 15 years ago. <laughs> the opening scene is Ben Stiller marries a chick goes to St. Bart's and she, his wife, he, he doesn't want to go scuba diving. So he tells his first day of marriage wife, yeah, go with the scuba instructor. And he walks in on him, you know, sleeping with his wife. And I'm going, I felt bad, but I was saying, if your wife's going to cheat on you, you want it to happen the first day, day one. before you have kids and stuff, you know, you can get an annulment that quick. Anyway, let's change subjects here. So, Let's do a hypothetical. Dan Fleischman, one of the masters of social media, lose, you know, you have to start, you're doing that, that show Grant Cardone did, uh, Undercover Billionaire. So yeah. I say, Dan, you got nothing. I'm putting you, I'm giving you a tent. You're, you know, you're living on, on the beach and you have to go out and build a million dollar business and you're timed and it's a contest with like 10 people. And there's one rule. It's got to be based around social media. You're going to build either a personal brand for yourself or use social media to grow an e-commerce brand like Zappos did or like Warby Parker. What's the one, two, three, you know, five minute formula business plan that you would put in place? All right. So I would immediately go into the city and I would pick a niche. So I like to pick a high end niche. Let's use luxury real estate. In this example and I would okay. go in and I'm gonna say I'm gonna throw an event this Sunday it's gonna be at 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. and I'm gonna do it at a high-end car dealership next Sunday is gonna be at a high-end mansion how do I have a high-end luxury dealership and a high-end mansion let me explain I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna start trying to book speakers to come speak at my luxury event that's gonna be happening this Sunday at 7 p.m. and next Sunday at 7 p.m. car dealership and mansion I'm going to go to the household name companies. I'm going to walk in. I don't need a car. I don't need a phone. I'm going to go show up. And I'm going to go there and find who is the guy that runs Sotheby's or the guy that runs uh, the biggest real estate place here or sells luxury homes or sells luxury cars. I'm going to go find them. I'm going to ask around the streets. Where'd you buy that house? How do you, and start asking people again, I don't need any money. Start asking people who helped you sell your house. Who's the biggest real estate agent in town? Who's the number one woman real estate agent in town? Who does the biggest apartment buildings? And just start asking everyone I can to find out who's big in real estate and then also big in cars. Gonna go there and I'm gonna invite them to speak at my fancy event happening this Sunday at seven o'clock. Once I get one or two of those speakers to confirm, I'm also at the same exact time going to go visit the local luxury car dealership and explain, hey, guess what? I'm throwing a luxury real estate event this Sunday at seven o'clock. I'd love to do it here and bring a bunch of these rich people over to your venue. Right now the event's free. Okay, this Sunday is going to be free. Next Sunday is going to be free. But it gives me an excuse to walk around downtown, whatever the city is, London, wherever you drop me off, Los Angeles, New York, doesn't matter. And I'm going to be inviting people to my fancy event happening this Sunday at 7 o'clock at a luxury car dealership and then next Sunday at a luxury mansion. Now, why do I keep saying luxury this and luxury that? Because that gives me an excuse to get a hold of any rich person in the city to be around me. When I throw the event, it gives me an excuse to get a hold of a videographer, photographer, to come film the content for free because they want to be around this super high-end content about all these wealthy people that have luxury cars, luxury homes, etc. And so now this starts to compound. 
Because when you invite someone to a luxury event, I've thrown hundreds and hundreds of events, that's why I'm using a real life situation. It gives you an excuse to invite the billionaire, the zillionaire, the reclusive person that never really goes out. It gives you an excuse to invite them and even if they don't go, you now have a reason to get a hold of the wealthiest people in the city. Here's the thing about those people. You can never give a gift to someone that's worth, let's say Ed Milet's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. What are you gonna buy Ed Milet? Nothing, right? He's got jets and cars and mansions, etc. But experiences is what they like. Experiences is what they remember. So if I invite Ed to a business event or a charity event or a luxury car event or a luxury house event, him, Manny Koshbin, Ty Lopez, they all want to be around those things because it's exciting, it's fun, and it's something that you can't buy. You can't buy those type of experiences and you can't buy that type of access. And so now I start to leverage each one. Hey, Ed Milet, I got Ty Lopez speaking in my event on Sunday at seven o'clock. Manny Koshman's gonna be there as well. We've got 17 cars that are gonna be parked outside of this luxury car dealership. And next Sunday we're doing it at this fancy mansion. I'm gonna have 17 luxury cars there too. And now I have this thing. The reason I want two events is if someone has an excuse because Ty is busy, well, he can't make it to this one. Guess what? He can make it to the next one. It's hard to have an excuse for two different dates. And so I start l inviting all these people in town and you'd be fascinated at how many of the wealthiest, busiest, biggest people in your city that you just got dropped off and Ty just dropped me off in London, New York, LA, Atlanta, doesn't matter, this applies anywhere, to come speak at my event. Once I have those speakers locked in, it's easy to get the venues because the venues want the wealthy people out there. And they have a lot of clients. The luxury car dealership guy, the luxury mansion people, they all have a lot of clients that are exactly who I want to meet. So by immersing myself with all these wealthy people, having a photographer, videographer there to make content, I'm edified because I'm up on stage holding the microphone. I'm the one that's mm -hmm. interviewing Ed Milet, right. Ty Lopez, Manny Koshbin. By default, my street cred went up. So right. now I've edified myself. I've met and networked all these people. They start to want to ask me a favor if they can invite their wealthy friends to come. Literally a favor. Again, this is not a joke or an idea or a concept. I've done this over and over and over for over a decade. My elevator night events are free, but they gave me an excuse to, inter to interview Russell Simmons, Jake Paul, Ty Lopez. I, these are people that normally get paid $100,000 to speak. They come for free because they want to be around this event and all the people that are there. And so what happens is now that I've done these two events, especially after the first one, I now have street cred, social media, by the way, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat, TikTok, all of them, including YouTube, are free, 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 and free. And so now I've got photos and videos with Ty Lopez, Ed Milet, Manny Koshman, all these great characters. I threw it at a fancy car dealership. I went from being a guy that has no money, I have no access, you gave me a tent to sleep in, to now I look like I'm out there balling, but I'm not just doing it to create that effect, I'm doing it to network. Because now I have access to all these interesting business people in that local community. And so the way for me to start monetizing it is, the third and fourth event are now a fee. I can now start charging $1,000 to come to my event. I can start doing consulting. Or you can do like a VIP dinner afterwards only to people who pay. So you have 100 people show up yes. and you say, a thousand you, take two, you take the two celebrities, if you had Jake Paul or whatever, yep. and then you say, we're doing a dinner after, it's 1,500 bucks. Yep. You know, and you make $18,000 net if 12 people pay. Yep. And so I've lived this in real life for many years. I went from free events to $100,000 per person masterminds. It's a big jump. And I sold out 100K mastermind to 100 people in a few months. Going from literally never selling an event before to all of a sudden selling out and doing $10 million of revenue in a few months. All from these free events. All from ex my excuse of networking over and over and over. And so if I was dropped off in a city, and this applies to most any city in the, in the world besides obviously a third world country, this wouldn't work if there's nobody there to create commerce with. Uh, but outside of that, any mid-size or major metropolitan city this applies to, hosting your own events gives you an excuse to call anybody. Again, even if they don't show up, you now have that favor, that like brownie point of inviting them to the cool event, even if they didn't show up. I love that. And you know, it's interesting about that. That's, that's how I got, I really started as an entrepreneur was doing, a, I was in Raleigh, North Carolina, didn't have much money. And I started doing UFC parties at my little apartment. I had a roommate. This guy Brian Marshburn, and and uh, I was and I forget it was funny. My rent was probably like eight hundred bucks, and it was split between this guy 
uh, and me and um I was like let's do a UFC event and I didn't have a TV <laughs> so I went to like Rena Center I remember so I did the first event with this little TV I had and like 30 people came oh my god okay <laughs> And so they were all trying to stare at this little screen and people were like, this party sucks. I can't see the UFC thing. So the second one, I'm like, I'm going to, I need a bigger TV. And I looked and it was like 800 bucks for a big flat screen. And I was like, I don't have 800 bucks. So I went to like rent center's website. And it, I remember it was $300 to rent one, which is kind of stupid if you could buy it for a thousand, but I didn't have a thousand bucks. So I rented it for 300 bucks. Then I, I remember turning to my roommate and being like, how am I ever going to make my $300 back? It was a lot of money to me. And um, so I put a, he's like, put a little tip hat. So we had pizzas. The pizzas cost us like 50 bucks. And we told everybody suggested like $30 and we made a profit of like 50 bucks. And I went from there and I went to this restaurant owner named Giorgio Batoxios. He's still in Raleigh, North Carolina. And he owned all these restaurants, nightclubs. And I said, can I have your small, I said, I did an event at my house. I've outgrown it. The apartment people started getting mad because I'd have like 60 people in a little apartment. So he gave me this place called the, the Red, uh, not Red Room, it's called Verde. It was in Durham, right next to Duke University. And from there, that really helped me grow because not only did I get into the hospitality nightlife business and start to make six figures, but I also, like you said, like I started to know people who had money who were business entrepreneurs to mentor me. And I ended up, people I met through those events became my business partners in other ventures, even to this day. So like, I like how, where you're going, because basically the mistake that happens in the modern world, tell me if you agree, is we live in a world where it's so much like social media and being on your phone that you can forget like old fashioned in-person connections with people still works because the human DNA is hardwired to connect in person. You need to be there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm glad you're bringing that up because it's like totally forgotten. Okay. Let's switch subjects for a second. And by the way, we got 23 minutes. So those of you in the audience here watching live on Speakeasy, can you please, any important questions you have for Dan before we end in 20 minutes, I'm going to ask him, one more question and then I'm going to switch it over to kind of audiences. People are saying good info. Oh. Somebody asked how much ad spend. So Akumi has a question. If I think I understand it, if you had a thousand dollar or a hundred thousand or ten thousand dollar budget, what percentage would you spend on each platform? Like, would you, let's say you were boosting Instagram. Now you can do TikTok posts. You can do YouTube. Like, What's your favorite kind of platform to concentrate your focus on? Or are you still a big believer in equally spreading it out yeah. on all the platforms? What's your yeah. thoughts there? So I always talk about omnipresence, about being on all the platforms. But then once you have all the platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Snapchat, YouTube, etc. Once you're on the top seven major platforms, the next thing is what I call digging for oil. So I would spend a hundred bucks, a hundred bucks, a hundred bucks, a hundred bucks, a hundred bucks on each platform. And I'll see my hundred bucks over here created zero dollars. Hundred bucks over here created forty-five dollars. Hundred bucks over here created two hundred forty dollars. But hey, the hundred bucks on Instagram or on TikTok did three hundred dollars in sales. Well, once I've digged for oil, I don't even think about the other ones as far as ad spend goes. I just put all my money into the one that had oil in it until it stops, right? Because it might stop in day yeah. three days, ten days, thirty days, uh, a year. I don't know when. But I'm going to keep digging on that one as far as money goes. But Posting content is, has to be on all the platforms because you don't know if, right. you, if your audience lives on YouTube or they love Twitter or they're just big TikTok fans. You don't know where they live. And the cost basis for you to create that content for the other platforms is nothing. If you make content for Instagram, you can repurpose the same exact video and caption on Facebook, on LinkedIn. You can do the same thing on TikTok, etc. Only platform you really need to be specific for is YouTube because that's more longer right. form content, longer videos. But all the other platforms, like you see me post a video or a photo, it's going to be on LinkedIn, two minutes later on Facebook, two minutes later on Instagram, two minutes later on TikTok. And there's no one, and I don't use an app to do all four. I, I manually do each one. I mean, because okay. you don't know. Some of my videos go get 600,000 views on TikTok. The next day they get 2,000 views, then 3,000, yeah. then 400,000. Yeah, there's like know. no rhyme or reason. Like sometimes my stuff crushes on TikTok, does horrible. In fact, 
almost never do they get remotely close to each other. Like a strong video that I post, like you said, gets 500,000 views on TikTok. It might get like 50,000 on Insta and vice versa. Like right. the algorithms still have a, still remember, algorithms still have a margin of randomness to them. They're, it's yep. not fully fleshed out. Like TikTok and Insta haven't fully figured out the algorithm. And, right? and they change so, off. And they so change do you off. Like, the like, let's talk on TikTok. One of the, uh, empower mind on speakeasy asks what's your thoughts on tiktok and privacy is it, are the chinese taking over are they bullshitting <laughs> like what what's your thoughts on this privacy are they because joe rogan just posted a thing where he's like did you read how they can you know basically track right. your keystroking whether it's on your laptop or on, on your phone like they're tracking what's your thoughts so they are tracking and it is clear they're not hiding it. It's not like a conspiracy theory. They are tracking. Uh, they do have access. Um, it's a tough spot because for the most part, for 99.99999% of humans, who cares? You're 19 years old, you live in Alabama and you're making TikTok videos. Like, what does it matter? Like, what are they actually gonna get or do? They're not gonna do anything to you. They're just, they're using data uh, for various reasons, but none of it is gonna harm you. Like, it's not gonna do anything if they have your data. Would it be useful for a military official to remove TikTok? Of course. Should anybody in politics right. or military or anybody with pertinent information have a TikTok account? No, they should not have a TikTok account. Uh, but for the 19 year old living in Wisconsin, like it, it just doesn't matter for the most part. So for the masses, it really doesn't matter. Um, it is scary the overreaching that they can be doing. We don't know what they're doing, but they can be doing simply because it is clear in their terms of service what they could be doing. But for the most part, I mean, it, it's a, a social media platform and all the platforms have been doing this all the time. Like Zuckerberg knows anything and everything about our lives. Us saying, if I just say, I want to buy a laptop at Radio Shack, I'm going to start getting ads from Ty about Radio yes. Shack. Right? So, you think, so you think they're actually audio tracking your conversation? Because it sure feels like that for people. I know without a shadow of a doubt that they are. And uh, we've joked about it because I've said things like, for, I'll give you an example for my honeymoon for the wedding. I said underwater hotel. I wanted to find like one of those hotels that has the underwater that you can see. I've never Google right. searched it ever in my life. Two hours later and I screen recorded it, I got the ads for underwater hotel resorts in Bali. <laughs> so it's without a shadow of a doubt, again, not a conspiracy theory. I didn't Google search it. Nobody has access to my phone. Underwater hotels two hours later and I recorded the whole process. And this has happened multiple times and there's videos about it. So are they listening? They absolutely are. It's not a joke. It's not a wonder. Again, for the most part, it's not the evil empire. Like they're doing it for right, right. good. They're trying to sell you things. So, um, yeah, so not trying to make more money. Yes. But they're not trying to like hack your credit. They're not hacking you. They're not trying to take you down. Like for the most part, they're using it for commerce. Yeah, because think about it. I mean, look, what, you know, what, there's billions of people using TikTok. It's not realistic the Chinese are going to control everything. But like you said, if you're ever doing a real serious conversation, stick your phone in the microwave. Don't turn the microwave on, by the way. <laughs> but stick the phone in the microwave. If there's three of you, you need to have a confidential conversation. Even Mark Zuckerberg, there's a, I don't know if you saw that old picture where he puts tape over the laptop yep. um, camera. Yep. Just in case, like, I tell people, it's like, go do a night walk on the beach. That's your best bet for nobody being able to track you. Loud wow. waves crashing down. Okay, some other questions. Um, personalized advertising. How can you personalize the ads? Somebody was asking, like, what's your, is it not that important? You can just post on incense and say, hey, this is for anybody. Do you like, I don't know if you're doing a lot of email marketing. Are you a big believer in like massive segmentation and personalization where you put a little token so it's just like bob and all that kind of stuff it just somebody had it that's an interesting yep. question so when it comes to email having someone say your name in the headline or in the top of the of the, the paragraph in the heading it yes. obviously has been useful for many many years um also if i invite people to an event i copy and paste their name even though i'm even though it's clear yes. that i'm yes. copy and pasting hey ty come to my birthday party it's clear that that part's copy and pasted. The body is copy and pasted. I still put Ty's name at the front. And if you want a, a little hack, add his name somewhere in the body as well. And boom, now yes. they, think they, they think you wrote it for them. Um, even though you're just adding yeah. two words, Ty and Ty. 
so adding adding personalization does help for, for email and for text invites um, if you're using SMS. When it comes to Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Snapchat, etc., it doesn't matter at all. I don't. It's nobody expects you to be direct marketing to them um, unless you're doing it through the DMs. And in the DMs, they already know right. you DM'd one to one anyways, so it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, they're not expecting that. Are they tracking you, you think, when the app's open and closed or just like when the app's open or? So theoretically, you'll be able to say what feature you want, but you know, <laughs> it, the overreaching could be there. We don't, we don't really know. You could turn things off and if Facebook or Instagram or TikTok wants to keep tracking you, we don't really know. That would be a conspiracy theory. Um, but as far as you can, you can turn it off uh, within the phone. I think that they need to, in their minds, they need to track you in order to be always be ready for you to go back on. Um, and so most apps, if you look at just within your apps on your phone, most apps are tracking, whether it's Hertz rent a car, whether it's any app, they're, they're tracking you for where you are, the credit cards, the airlines, et cetera. So um, you just kind of have to know that in the last three, four years in particular, we're pretty much always being tracked by the apps in our phone. Um, and I don't know if you turn that off, if you necessarily actually get away or get privacy. But I also don't know that it really matters. Hillary, you gotta yeah. do a Hillary Clinton did. You gotta get a hammer and just smash them and <laughs> put them in acid. Yeah. That'll probably work. Put them in a barrel of acid like the, like the Mexico cartel does with bodies. That'll probably stop the tracking. Yeah. Acid, melt, uh, acid melting of your equipment. It's very effective. Um, by the way, I just bought the domain uh, I bought the domain networth.com that I'm going to launch. So it's going to be pretty cool. I got to talk to you this on Dan. I bought it from Hewlett Packard. Nice. It. But basically the concept is, you know, right now, 130 million monthly searches with a person's name and the word net worth. Whoa. Donald Trump net worth, Dan Fleischman. And look at the long tail of just like insane. It's like, it's either 130 million a year or a month. I think it's a month. It's like insanity. And one of my SEO guys was doing the keyword research, but yeah. it's it's just like a millions a day. Yeah. Okay. And so I bought network.com and this is just changing the subject here. I think people like to hear like the makings of a business plan. This is how I think through my business plan and Dan, give me some things that I should do that you can think of some pointers. So Forbes, does the really rich people that are mostly own public assets that's easy to verify. It's easy to know Elon Musk's net worth because it's mostly in stock. Tesla yeah. public stock. And therefore, or at least a great portion of it, you can just track daily how his net worth moves, Bill Gates, Bezos, so on. When it comes to Dan Fly, I'm guarantee you lots of people every month search Dan Fleischman net worth. But like my net worth is like all over the place on websites. Like I've seen 10 million, hundreds of millions, 50 million, like all this. So what I'm going to offer is a service to influencer or a service to individuals that for a small fee, we use a third party that will verify your net worth and you get a badge on it. This is only now, and it could be a range, right? But my experience is entrepreneurs want people to know their net worth, not necessarily me and you, but a lot of people yep. like the status of net worth. So I also think it's a service to people because a lot of people want to know, you know, what somebody's net worth is. So I'm going to launch this verified version. And of course, we'll have we're going to try to get a million profiles up over the next 36 months. Um, we'll start with a thousand and we're going to focus on people that are wealthy, but not necessarily on the Forbes list. Yep. So what, how would you, what, what should I think about? What's your advice on how to make that an even better business plan? Yep. So verifications is good. I think what's interesting is um, if someone could actually share that profile to, and they got really like super verified to like, Hey, I'm looking at a lease of this building or I'm looking at a office space or I'm oh, going to right. buy a car and you guys actually vetted me. If I think yes. about it, I can't even get an appointment to go see a mansion or to go look at a jet or a yacht without it getting approved first. If you guys were that, huh. I think that's interesting. Um, where people trusted networth.com to be like the, the credit karma, if you will, like the credit karma of the yes. space. Um, because I don't want to submit financials to go look at a yacht or a jet or a car or a mansion if I'm just going right. to go look at it. Uh, but it'd be interesting to just send my networth.com link um, and show that it's verified. Um, 
Maybe there's a second verification, yeah. like like a super verification. I like that. Uh, we we have it. We can do it with CPAs. So basically, you'll upload privately your info, so you're secure. I actually won't see it. It goes to a U.S. lawyer, and that lawyer will certify it. So nice. it's like a you know really legit thing. Yep. So the main website that people search is like pops up, not search for, but pops up is celebritynetworth.com, and yes. They just pick numbers arbitrarily, right? I, I've yeah. seen I've seen mine on there says fifty million dollars, and then it has like the wrong birthday and the wrong date and the wrong company. You know, like yes. they're just kind of like scraping to do it, like to grab yes. the. Uh, my birthday was September September second on there. I, I forgot what my company was. It was like a weird company. Anyway, so like, celebrity net worth is a, <laughs> but the traffic they get I heard is insanity. I mean, like. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just be, yeah. but. Watch out, ladies and gentlemen, because I own networks.com and good domain like that. It doesn't necessarily have the same SEO authority, but it has authority in the world. Meaning, like you said, if you were going to buy a mansion, you know, and networks.com shows up with a really professional website, that's a real tool for you. Like you said, like a credit karma score, like, look, here's, here's the deal you can, and we could even have an enterprise version that could send them some, you know, they could click and get some more verification. I like that. Yeah. Because so like, it's very interesting. So you could, and depends on how deep people want to get, I could say, Hey, look, here's a $4 million house and I have six cars and I have one jet and I have 13 investments. Yes. You know, like it depends on how deep it wants to get, but you could have like the super high end version that I could you literally have a use dating for business. version. This dude, <laughs> We'll get, we'll marry you with no prenup. He has a no prenup badge. <laughs> <laughs> this one, this, this man. Yeah. You could have all kinds of stuff. You could go deeper down the, the rabbit did, hole here. You could be like, this I, person only has two bodies in the basement. I, I did a, they only, their criminal records, only two, two murders, not three. I think a dating site, dude, I think a lot of those searches are around dating. Like there's a lot of people doing the dating thing. Da, 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 like, uh, and then there's all a lot of competitive searches. Like, okay, right. I'm worth, you yeah. know, whatever. Yeah. I wonder if this dude, my competitor's worth more. Da, da, da. Yeah. Like for me, I, I like my net worth to show low because I've found there's not a lot of upside, but right. I used to think it was cool. I, it's funny. I used to want my net worth to be like, I remember when it showed like, whatever one or five million bucks and i was like no i want to prove it's way higher now I'm the <laughs> other way i'm like let's keep this sucker low exactly. i don't need that kind of attention you know what i mean <laughs> everybody wants what they don't have when yeah. you don't have it you want it elon musk network is like 200 billion yeah it'd be interesting the thing that people don't realize about net worth it, it's a tricky one because there's a lot of subjective private valuations of companies you know what i mean yep all right we got a few minutes left um how much did the domain cost you uh, it cost a decent amount of money not as not as i got it for a decent price though yeah acquire other networks yeah you know i like to buy other stuff so i'll be looking to buy other domains but just on a private note not even for everybody else let's Let's talk for a minute here. Pretend nobody else is on this call, Dan, but I want to get you involved in get you paid to help me grow this app because I think this Speakeasy app has a purpose. Like Spotify is good. Apple Podcasts is good, but you can't interact with the damn person. You know, Joe Rogan, Sirius is good, but it's cool to be able to interact and also have a social platform side of the thing. Clubhouse had an opportunity. They went down a different route which I don't want to go down with speakeasy. So what do you think? What's a plan me and you can do together offline? Is it get some pay, start paying a whole bunch of people in your, in your, uh, world yep. to start doing shows once a month, twice a month kind of thing. Yep. So there's two things. One is some of them having their own shows or hosting or going live, which works really effectively. Uh, but two is also them just looking organic about listening and watching. So, with them posting about, with them wearing headphones or them on a laptop or them in a car or them at an event or them, them actually util, utilizing the app in a real organic feeling. People will know that it's paid, but not feel that it's paid, if that makes sense. Where they're actually like yes. consuming the content. So 
that we've done that for podcasts before. Obviously, there's household name podcasters that have spent huge money with us because we simply have people posting, hey, I'm listening to this household name podcaster. Oh my God, this episode really got me to tears. Oh, this episode, wow, inspired me. Oh, I listen to this podcast every day when I work out. Like, it's the thing that it, it feels like it's being paid or, or it feels organic depending on the context of it. But most importantly, people can now see how they could utilize it, them listening or them watching, whether it's to inspire, uh, et cetera. Um, obviously, people making shows is the most useful because now there's consistency. Anytime a company can have people on a consistent, whether it's a once a week, once a month type uh, product posting, it works the best. Someone doing a one-off like, hey, check out Speakeasy app, swipe up, the conversion will be tiny, right? Because people yeah. have to see it multiple times to believe that that person's actually utilizing it and to also have their whole audience see it because on average on Instagram, only 7% of their following sees a post. So yes, a one-off post of saying, hey, go listen on Speakeasy or go watch this on Speakeasy, it'll work a little bit, but on the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh post, it's gonna work really well because people are gonna now believe that they're actually part of it, they utilize it, they listen to it. Um, people, and then at some point, people start to organically post it because what happens is, right now, when you look at Instagram stories, a pretty big percentage are people posting what music they're listening to on Spotify or Sirius. Yep. That's literally their screenshot on Instagram story, which is a very valuable piece of real estate. They're organically posting like, listen, right now, today, it's happening at scale. Like today is a great example. DJ Khaled, his new album came out last night. And go yep. look at Instagram stories today. Everyone and their mom oh, it's crazy. is posting about screenshots from God did. And it's just like a mind blowing amount of people. <laughs> God did. He's the master of so using good. these phrases. I don't, I think DJ Cal is one of the best phrase masters. Like he's got like God did, or yeah. what was the main, what was the one he started with when he was like, He'd always go, huh, or whatever <laughs> when he first started and was on that. What God did, what's another DJ Khaled thing? Do I have any DJ Khaled? DJ Khaled, yeah, he used his own name, but he had some other phrase. Another one, that's the one, yeah. and Major Key. Yeah, he Major is Key. damn good. He's a great mark. We the best. How yeah. do we forget we the best? Yeah. If I had to hear fucking we the best another one, one. time, my yeah. brain would explode. Yeah, we did a campaign with, <laughs> we did a campaign with him for DraftKings. Um, Actually, you did the same campaign. That was a fun one. But we had him. We like, did. We had By him. the way, I'm gonna I'm gonna have Itzel. I'm gonna have them wire you money on Monday. It's okay. too late today. Let's get a Let's get a buy. I'm ready to go. Okay. Literally, we just finished up the features, and let's just we got a good budget for this thing. I'm gonna. Uh, we've spent money to build it. We got investment behind it. Help me blow this thing up. And um, we also have tracking, so people we can track who brings in the follower. Not that. That's the only way we can pay people a flat fee, but yep. also we have the back. It's nice to track a little bit, even yep. though you never track a hundred percent. You know what I mean? Of course. So let's, let's, I want to good. If people want to follow up with you now that we're ending the show, what's the best place to get services from Dan Fleischman? If you want to know more about your mastermind, what's the, what's the place to go? Yeah. So all my social media is the same. It's just at Dan Fleischman, uh, which is also important for you guys listening. Your screen name should be the same on every platform. Your bio should be the yes. same and your photo should be the same as well because people need to see it multiple times. And if they're scrolling by on Twitter or Instagram, you got to be the same across every platform. Awesome. Go check out at, and he's got a at Fleischman or at Dan Fleischman on speakeasy. Everyone do me a favor. Go drop them a quick. I think, I think, can they now um, send them a tip in the DMS? Who's going to be the first person to go tip DM? Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to tip them myself. Let me see if I can do it. Dot AD. Can you all still hear me? Can you still hear me, Dan? Yeah, I can hear you. It already, oh, yeah, it already says it right here. I can DM. see it. Why does it not show in the damn DM? All right. I'm finding little bugs I'm going to fix. Okay, man. Well, thank you so much for this. And, uh, I'm excited and I'm excited to get you to help blow this thing up. Sounds so good. It's time to hit the ground. Let's rolling do it. hardcore. Later, guys. Talk to you later. All right. Bye.